Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, so this week's advanced echo teaching will be on uh, ASDs. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen. Okay. Um, when to suspect ASD? So obviously you have your usual clinical presentations that we look for. The most common things that we would see would be um, paradoxical emboli. Um, you might hear a murmur. I don't know. I've never picked up an ASD that way. Um, but on a routine echo or an echo in one of your ICU patients that you're getting for other reasons, human instability, shock, whatever, um, if you see unexplained right heart enlargement or plus or minus pulmonary hypertension. So um, if you see a, right, a large right atrium or ventricle and you don't have an explanation for it, so they don't have um, any reason to be volume overloaded of the right ventricle, then this is something that you need to go hunting for. Or if you think that their fluid balance is optimized. Um, I have to briefly touch a little bit on embryology in order to, for any of this to make any sense, but I promise um, I'll, it's not going to be boring. It's quite interesting actually. So the, the way that the heart forms and all of this is in the first like four or five weeks, it's pretty amazing. Um, you get this sort of mass of tubes, this long one, this big long tube, and then it kind of folds in on itself. And then by day 35, you have um, primitive atria and ventricles. Um, and you cut through that, what you have is, um, in a straw, you sort of have this combined atrium. This is about um, in between. So about 28 days, you have this combined atrium and, a, and one ventricle, very primitive. And then you sort of have, except not, um, they're not always super defined. You have the veins at the back, this kind of mess of veins. So that becomes your SVC, you get an IVC opening into this side, the right side of this common atrium. And then you have some, uh, Pulmonary veins. So these are the four pulmonary veins that will become go into what becomes the left ventricle. Um, then what you get is so so you also have this sort of um, what they call endocardial cushions. So this stuff forms the atrioventricular valves. The AV valves grow from these structures. Um, so the first thing to happen is the septum primum. So the septum primum grows down from here and it stops and you get a little opening just above the endocardial cushion. And that allows uh, flow um, through the uh, atria. Because remember, you need unobstructed flow from the right atrium to the left atrium in the fetus. Um, as this partitions as well, the ventricles partition, but I'm just going to ignore the ventricular side of things for for the moment. Uh, then what happens is you get the um, septum secundum forming that goes up both sides. So um, at the same time, this orifice obliterates and you get Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find the eraser. Yeah, and then you get a new perforation, starting to form. Yeah. So it starts with a little holes and then it forms into one big hole. Now these septums have to overlap, but as long as the right atrial pressure is higher than the left atrial pressure, which it is always in the fetal circulation, you will get blood flow. Should do blood flowing. Um, let's do blood flow in purple, just to be interesting. 
you will get blood flow going like this through that opening. But they have to overlap because in the when the um, when the this closes over, this this is the foramen ovale. When it closes over, you need a fusion of of the two septum. So the um, the flap closes when the left atrial pressure goes higher than the right, and then eventually fuses. And of course, that doesn't happen in everyone, and that's what a patent foramen ovale is. If it doesn't fuse because it's, they don't reach each other, either because of the septum primum hasn't developed enough or the septum secundum hasn't developed enough, then you get a big gaping hole. And that is, so then this forms the intraatrial septum, and then you have this big hole. And you get flow and this is true with all ASDs, left to right shunt. Unlike a PFO, this is why I don't consider PFOs true ASDs, you, get, you can get right to left shunts. But in, in ASDs, they should be left to right shunts. Um, if this initial bit the, in the septum primum, the ostium primum, if this doesn't close properly, then you get a primum ASD. Is that all making sense so far? Cool. Yeah. All right, so those are the first two kinds of ASD. So you have the septum secundum, which is very common. Uh, sorry, the secundum ASD, which is very common, 60 to 80% of, of, of the ASDs you see. All ASDs, I've seen um, in, um, numbers of like six to ten percent of congenital heart defects will be ASDs, and the vast majority of those are secundum ASDs. Primum ASDs are quite unique because primum ASDs are actually part of um, a spectrum of other congenital heart diseases called atrioventricular canal defects, also called atrioventricular septal defects. Um, it all means the same thing, but it's, that's on a spectrum that's on the very mild end or incomplete partial atrioventricular canal defect, you could call it, on the very mild end of the spectrum of a whole range of defects that can involve the atrioventricular valves and the um, superior part of the ventricular septum. And you can get a, basically a, a um, common atrioventricular valve, so the mitral and tricuspid valves are fused and they're unrecognizable as individual valves. Um, and that's accompanied with VSDs as well. That would be a complete atrioventricular canal defect. So you can get anything in that spectrum um, of, of, of defects. So um, that's primum and secundum. So, then we get to your sinus venosus ASDs, which are, I've said 10% here, but they're probably rarer than that. Um, uh, and they're really, um, if I show you this image, so as the heart forms in, in the embryo, but what's behind it, the venous structure that's forming, is like a mess. <laughs> it's just a mess of veins. Um, so it's easy to see how some partitions might not happen correctly or some fusions might happen incorrectly. So what it's described as I've seen it described in two ways is, um, so your, your actual atrial septum is completely formed. So this is not a true atrial septal defect. What happens is you get a fusion of pulmonary veins, let's do a different color here. Usually the right side of pulmonary veins, right upper or right lower, because it's the closest one. So your right pulmonary vein, which kind of goes across like this, would fuse with the SVC. So then you get a connection between the SVC and the um, right upper pulmonary vein. So then you have shunting of blood 
through your SVC and then instead of going into the right, it goes into the right atrium, but it also goes directly into the left atrium. That's the superior type, which is the more common of this very uncommon ASD. Um, and then the inferior type is called the inferior vena cava type, but a true fusion of the inferior vena cava is quite unusual. Um, and again, it's usually the, the pulmonary, the right pulmonary vein is actually fusing directly into the right atrium. Right? Does this make sense so far? Okay, cool. <laughs> my, my artwork is beautiful. Um, okay, so just to You're doing a great job, Benny. It's a fantastic. Okay. I don't know how you're drawing so well with your mouse. It's an amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> um, so this is just another diagram that explains the steps of the septum forming. So you have the septum primum. So this orifice is called the ostium primum. I'll just go over the terminology one more time because it does get a little bit confusing. Septum primum, this first opening, the first interatrial shunt in the fetal circulation is the ostium primum. And this is the side view of that. Then the, you need little perforations forming. This is the side view, which eventually becomes the ostium secundum, which was the, up here that I drew before. So as the septum secundum forms, this is kind of happening simultaneously. So you have a septum secundum coming down to the right of the septum primum. And then to maintain, uh, the septum ostium primum closes off, but to maintain an opening through the atria, you get another orifice called the um, ostium secundum. Yeah. It's confusing because there's septum secundum and there's ostium secundum. Septum secundum is the second septum. Ostium secundum is the hole, the second hole that forms in the ostium, in the septum primum. Does that make sense? So that's why I, I'm going over this like multiple of times because it's really, really confused me, especially when you start to name the um, primum and secundum ASDs. So when we're talking about primum ASD, we're talking about the ostium primum. It's this thing, and, it, and instead of closing off, since it's supposed to close off down here, it should be completely gone here, it doesn't close off. That's an ostium primum ASD. A secundum ASD is where you have these perforations um, uh, or a hole, and you don't get a complete overlap of the uh, primum and secundum septae, and therefore it can't close off. When you do have a complete overlap, but it doesn't fuse, that's a PFO. Um, so just going back to, um, okay, so I just finished off talking about those two because they're the most common. Um, here's your secundum, uh, sorry, um, primum ASD and your secundum ASD. So you can see um, this one is right above atrioventricular valves and the border is actually, it borders the valves. So it can't be closed and do, um, it, with interventional cardiology. Uh, it needs um, surgical closure. Similarly, your sinus venosus defects, to my knowledge, can't be closed with um, interventional devices like the Plaza, for example, that have to be surgically corrected. Um, and the secundum ASDs are by far the most common. So I say 60% here, but some say 80%. And the very small ones, this is how you can tell between a PFO and a secundum ASD as well. The very small ones, about three millimeters or so, will close spontaneously. Um, even between three and eight millimeters, about 80% will close. And then higher than uh, eight millimeters, they 
are more less likely to close spontaneously. So a clue, if you're wondering whether it's a PFO or a secundum ASD, because they're in the same location, um, a clue is that a PFO will be small, um, a secundum ASD will be larger, and the shunt direction. So an ASD will have a left to right shunt. Um, so with the sinus venosus um, uh, ASDs, uh, there's a superior and inferior type that we talked about. And they're actually very, uh, very easy to miss on a transthoracic echo. There are um, uh, off-axis uh, special views that very talented sonographers will describe. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and I, I think for us as uh, doctors, it's probably just easy to do a toe. Um, and they're probably easier to, much easier to pick up on toes. Um, so what you can, um, uh, so what you can do is try and get a bicable view, and I'll, I'll show you some examples later to pick those up. And then the final type of ASD is a coronary sinus ASD. Again, very rare. Um, uh, and there, there is a spectrum of these as well, um, ranging from a completely unroofed coronary sinus to um, just perforations. So commonly associated with the persistent left-sided IVC, sorry, left-sided SVC, excuse me, that's an error. I'll just fix that. Um, so on this model, um, I'll just stop sharing for a sec. So can you guys see me? Yeah, with my finger. So, um, so you have a heart model. <laughs> And then you have the uh, coronary sinus. I saw a sonographer do this, so this is not an original idea, I'm just ripping off her idea. You have this coronary sinus um, going across this way, right? Feeding in, um, sorry, from the, um, feeding into the right atrium, right? Now, this wraps around the uh, I hope it's not um, flipped for you guys, not mirror imaged. Um, it is for me, so this is kind of freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> but, so on the left side, um, you have the left atrium here, the coronary sinus runs around it. Now, if there can be actually no partition between the coronary sinus and the left atrium, that's a completely unroofed coronary sinus. Or you can just have little perforations from... This does, does it open? From the inside. No, you can't see it on the inside. But maybe you can show you. So, yeah, so you see the coronary sinus here, left atrium. You can get like little perforations. That's also a coronary sinus ASD. Again, not actually a true defect in the interatrial septum. So, these are all ASDs, but the only ones that are defects in the interatrial septum are the first two, the primum and the secundum. And then the, the sinus venosus ASDs are a venous mistake. And then the coronary sinus is a veno, veno atrial, another veno atrial communication. Um, okay. And that actually uh, um, is fed from, can be fed from a, a left sided SVC. So I'll start sharing again, just one sec. Okay, so um, a good way to pick these up is one, the coronary sinus will be dilated because of the left side of SVC. There's a lot of blood flow going through the coronary sinus. And then the other way, the, the, the other way to pick them up is um, in, inject contrast or do a bump study through the left um, vein and then it should you should see it in the coronary sinus first which if you do it which is abnormal so if you um, you know it's like in a normal bubble study it goes into the right atrium first okay so um, talked about that oh I should just mention with the silence venosus ASDs as you would expect going back to this picture because it's kind of a mess of veins 
they're often associated with anomalous pulmonary venous connections. So you might actually get your right upper pulmonary vein feeding directly into the left, so the right atrium, or you might get, um, there's, a, there's a whole range of anomalous pulmonary venous connections, but that's the most common one that they're associated with. Okay, so um, just a little bit more about when you identify that you have a secundum ASD. Um, uh, a good way to report it is through the margins because if it's large enough, somebody needs to close this and it's typically described in this way. This is a great um, picture that I just got off Google images that's repeated on many sites. Um, so they talk about the rims, like the IVC, the right upper pulmonary vein, the SVC, and you kind of describe the distance to these other structures because the um, um, Platza needs a five millimeter radius to, um, to cover the, the ASD properly. So I'll just read to you guys, um, I summoned across a, uh, across a report from Prof that I thought was really good. Um, he actually talks about um, a PFO, but um, you get the idea. So he says, measurements were taken around the PFO in preparation for a percutaneous closure. PFO is a tunnel right, with right to left shunting and tunnel length of 16 to 18 millimetres. The margins of the PFO are coronary sinus, 11 millimetres, mitral valve, 17 millimetres, tricuspid valve, 19 millimetres. Um, Aortic valve, seven millimeters. SVC, 22 millimeters. You get the idea. Um, so, so he's actually describing distances from, from each of these orders. Um, so the secundum ASD is being the most common. I'm just gonna talk mostly about those because they can be quite variable in their um, size, shape, location. And you can even get perforated type um, uh, uh, ASDs. So if you uh, see multiple jets of, that look like multiple ASDs on your echo, that's probably a secundum ASD. And the reason why that happens is because you, you're catching it at this part of the, the um, development. So it never actually gets to a proper formed whole, it stays as these fenestrations, and that is the, the secundum ASD. Um, so a couple of examples from various sources. So these are uh, toes, but they're flipped upside down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this is a very detailed book. Um, if you're sitting the, the um, AS, um, ASC exam, uh, there are many books. This is one I used. It's extremely detailed, but what I liked about it was it had like online videos that you could use as well. Pietric echo is very, very painful. Um, anyway, so what you can see here is um, you have uh, LA, RA, the aortic valve coming in. So this is a five, 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 oh, sorry, don't know what's going on there. Five chamber view. Um, and you can see the, um, this is more of a bicaval view where you have an SVC and IVC and the secundum goes like bang in the middle, straight in the middle. Um, on a short axis view, a little bit similar to this, it can look very close to the aortic valve and actually trying to find cases for this talk, um, I looked through our database of reports and did a search for all the various different kinds of ASDs. And this is often misreported as a primum ASD based on a short axis view. But if you can see the aortic valve, it's not a primum ASD, it's a secundum ASD. If you can see multiple jets, it's a secundum ASD. It's, if it's large, it's usually a secundum ASD, unless you have a really good reason to think it's something else, it's a secundum ASD, because they're just the most common. Um, okay, a couple more examples. So this is a little bit better, a little bit better orientation. Um, this is from the guidelines about ASD 
imaging from the ASE. Uh, so left atrium, right atrium, and this person has a atrial, a interatrial uh, septal aneurysm. And it's an aneurysm when it's um, 10 millimeters, the base is at least 10 millimeters, and it goes out at least 15 millimeters. By definition, um, it's very hypermobile, um, it can go either direction, and those are usually associated with an ASD. So if you see a very mobile um, intratrial septum, go hunting for an ASD, secundum ASD. Okay, so, um, and uh, this is a intracardiac echo. Um, I just thought the images were nice, so I included this one. We don't use intracardiac echo very much, but, but the clue is that the right, it's from the right atrium. And you can see a big defect here, a big shunt, which is left to right. And then here is the amplexa occluding it. Okay. Now this one is the only example of a primum ASD I could find anywhere <laughs> um, with a good image. Um, but, um, uh, so I just sorry to tell you, sorry, this is a transthoracic, but this is a, in the pediatric orientation of a transthoracic. And the way they do it is they do it uh, sort of anatomically. So it's an, it's an apical view, um, but it's, I guess it's kind of flipped upside down. Uh, it's like an adult one, but it's flipped upside down because they, they want an image from the, from, from the apex and then they want the left where the left is like as if they're looking at it with the probe and they're looking at it so it's easier to orientate themselves anatomically. So there's a left ventricle here, there's a right ventricle here. And there's a, left, it's a bit, bit blurry, but left atrium, right atrium. And then the primum ASD goes right above the atrioventricular valve. So this person actually has a common atrioventricular valve. Um, but the, which, so this is a little bit further down on the spectrum of atrioventricular canal defects, but the primum ASD, which is the one I, the, the, what I want to focus on, is just above the atrioventricular valve level. And you should be able to see it on four chamber. So you should see it on your four chamber, transthoracic four chamber from the apex or a four chamber at the, on the subcostal view. If you see it within a five chamber um, or a short axis with the aortic valve, that's not a primum ASD. I specifically mentioned that because it, the, I found a lot of misdiagnosed primum ASDs. Um, okay, and then this, sorry, this is the um, coronary sinus, unroofed coronary sinus. So, so there's a this is a toe image, left atrium, left ventricle. Um, you have the very, very large coronary sinus here with a clear defect from the left atrium. This is an unroofed type. Making sense? Good. Um, okay, and this is one of ours. So maybe I'll pick on someone. Um, ben, do you want to... Um, Talk us through, this is a, a loop of, um, it's just one of you, a loop uh, with and without color. So just talk us through. Yeah, sure. Okay, um, so I was given the nature of the talk, I'll just talk about what I see. So looking at a Doppler box over the interatrial septum, which is, is showing what I will, is showing what is a... So, so what view is this? Is this a subcostal apical? Subcostal. Yep, subcostal four chamber, right? Yep, so sorry, subcostal four chamber view, um, which is showing a left to right uh, interatrial um, defect, or left to right flow um, across the left to right, um, uh, uh, PFO, sorry, not PFO, septal defect. Yep. Yes. And and anything else about it? Anything about the colour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so 
So for the color to cycle again. So you said it's left to right, that's right. Yeah, it's left to right. It looks like there's just a single um, jet. I don't think there's, I don't think there's two individual jets there. I think it's just one. Um, so I think there's actually. Think there's a second. Is there a second jet? So I can. I want to point my finger. I Maybe thought it was just a single jet. Um, um, I think there's actually two. So here it is, like on the two D, you could see it, but there's actually multiple jets. Uh, yeah. Um, there's at least two. So there's two there. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. I can see it on the bigger screen now. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, so what kind of ASD is this going to be? So it's going to be a secundum. Yeah, good. Mm. It's always a secundum. <laughs> yes. if, there's, if there's more than one, you know. You exactly. So if there's more than one, it's like smack bam in the middle. Yeah. Um, left to right, so it's not not a PFO. Um, yeah. And I'll go into that a little bit more. It's not. So um, good, thanks, Ben. Um, so uh, other types of ASDs or are things that are sometimes included included in ASDs is PFOs, which they are in the guidelines, but they don't cause the same hemodynamic effects like right. Um, chamber enlargement and then in severe disease pulmonary hypertension. You don't get that with PFOs. And then there's a Gavodi defect. Does anybody know what a Gavodi defect is? Isn't that a defect from the membranous uh, ventricular septum to the right atrium? Beautiful, beautiful. So um, if I go back to... I don't know, don't know anything more about it. That's pretty much it. There's not that much to know. Um, right. So if I, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get a new blank page. Okay. So um if you have um so let, let's say let's take your uh your normal um apical transthoracic view um and mm, careful with the dirt where are you getting the dirt from are you digging holes where are you getting the dirt from then So you are digging holes. No more dirt, please. Okay, that's all the dirt. Who is that? Do you want to mute, mute, mute your mic? Only while you're telling off your children. Otherwise, you don't need to mute, mute your mic. I thought he was talking to you, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> no dicto. <laughs> I thought he was bagging out your drawing. I think it's very good, Bernie. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, thank you, somebody. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, this is a bit of a crappy drawing, sorry. But, um, so basically you, you can see, so this is a left ventricle, um, and I've deliberately offset this because there is, um, the, the tricuspid valve is more apical than the mitral valve. That's actually how you identify in congenital heart disease. That's how you identify um, the right ventricle is the right ventricle contains more apical valve. So this has to be tricuspid valve. And then this is mitral valve. And then there's, this is offset a little bit. So you can actually get a defect that goes through here. Let's go this way. So the left ventricle to right atrium. That's called a Gabaiti defect. Anyway, that's what it is. Some people can, put, can um, include those in um, ASD talks, but um, it's not really. It's the nature of the ventricular septum defect. Um, Benny, I think I read about that in the context of endocarditis. Is, oh, right. Is that a thing or I, I can't quite remember where. 
I don't know. I think that required, required yeah, any, any connection I think between the two of them is called a Gabodi defect, and you say I've I've seen it as well with infected endocarditis. So. so the infections eroded through and caused the perforation, oh. and then oh, okay, and then you get a Gabodi defect. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so um, I'll talk a little bit more about PFOs. Um, so uh, on toes, and I've seen some people um, do bubble studies and put the intratrial septum with um, the metasophageal short axis through the atrioventricular valve and look at the intatrial septum there. I really don't like that view because you don't get this nice flap so what tells me that this is the right part of the septum is that there's a flap. Even when it's fused, you can still see a flap. You see this, the membranous part of the intatrial septum. And it, this might be fused, there might be no, no um, shunt, but I think it's really important to visualize these properly on a bicable view of a toe, um, if that's what you're looking for. Here, there, there is obviously a PFO, right? Um, and then there's something else that's interesting. There's something that's called a stretched PFO. So what happens is as the heart dilates, but the, you, you still have the flap, but sorry, there's like shortcuts built into my mouse that I can't get rid of. Um, you have the, this flap, but it kind of still stretches out a little bit. So it can look like there's an actual, um, uh, defect in, in the septum. Okay. Um, my mouse is spazzing, sorry. Okay, so there are other things that you want to look for on the echo. So we talked about um, the hemodynamic effects and that's the right chamber dilation. And then if there's quite events, you can get high pulmonary pressures. And that's a volume overload. It's not a pressure overload, it's a volume overload. Um, and then, uh, so you want to identify the type, um, the size, measure it in multiple views because, um, as I showed you, that they're not necessarily perfectly round. They can be all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, look at the margins, um, particularly for the secundum ASDs because uh, it has implications with whether they can repair it or not. So because the size and, and location of those ASDs can be so variable, if there's like right up against the atrial ventricular valve, for example, then they, they're not going to be able to repair it because um, they'll cause damage to the valve. Um, look at the shunt. You should be expecting a left to right shunt. Um, the proximity to other structures was sort of touched on. Um, don't forget about the sinoatrial and the atrioventricular nodes and the um, socio-congenital defects, um, which I listed in the earlier slide. Uh, so QPQS, everybody talks about when they talk about ASDs or VSDs because you, it, it looks at flow through the pulmonary circulation and through, flow through the systemic circulation. And then technically if you have, you know, increased flow through your pulmonary circulation, then you, then you can quantify, if you can quantify the stroke volume um, going through the pulmonary valve, uh, and the stroke volume going through the aortic valve and look at the difference, you can actually quantify the amount of shunt um, that's happening, the, the volume, the extra volume that the right side and the pulmonary circulation is seeing. In practice, it's very difficult to actually do accurately and it's fraught with difficulties. And part of this is because the RVOT is so difficult to measure and it's not actually round. Um, and then sometimes the alignment of the um, pulmonary vein, uh, pulmonary valve pulse wave is difficult to get. Um, uh, it's difficult to get a good um, pulse wave there sometimes. Um, so every talk I've ever been to on congenital heart disease, ASDs, VSCs, they mention this and then they say, in theory, you could do it, but in practice, don't bother because it's too difficult. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to talk about. So um, with more assessment, uh, with, if you want to further assess the ASD, it's always more surveillance imaging. Um, obviously not just um, uh, transthoracic um, toe um, and you can look at uh, cardiac MRI, for example. Look at 3D, 3D would be really great for this. Um, 
uh, 3D Echo, I mean. Um, and if you want to know a little bit more, I, um, I found a couple of things really helpful. A recent talk by GE Vivid Talks, it's free. And then um, a webinar that's all, that was also free from the Royal Brompton on adult congenital heart disease. And they were, they were real experts there. The other thing I think, um, especially if you sit in the ASC exams, um, Benita, Benita Anderson's her second book, this one, The Smographer's Guide, A Smographer's Guide. At the end, at the final paragraph, final chapter, sorry, she actually has introduction to adult congenital heart disease. And it's a really nice summary of everything that as an adult echocardiography you would need to know about, how, about congenital heart disease. And it has a really nice description of all the ASDs and then some common um, congenital heart diseases like tetralogy and um, things like that. Yes, Benny, I've, um, I think we might try and get Ruth to come and talk on this because I've heard her talk before and she is remarkable at this. She is phenomenal. And um, yeah. The uh, adult genital heart disease stuff, uh, the, they, they do a whole course at the Brompton. I think it's a two or three day course once a year, which I was going to try and go to this year. Unfortunately, obviously COVID uh, messed that yeah. up. Yeah, oh, so I they, think that's what they, they do. They converted it to a webinar. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's meant to be absolutely fantastic. Those are two really good resources, I think. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're really good. Um, and I think that's all I want to talk about. Are there any questions? Um, Benny, I, I thought that was a fantastic, uh, fantastic talk. Thank you very much. And just maybe just to highlight again for the for the DDU exam side of things, uh, absolutely, this is fair game to be asked about. And particularly, again, to highlight what Benny was saying about the unexplained RV dilation, you've got to go thinking about uh, thinking about shunts and thinking about ASDs in particular. And the next thing is to talk about is knowing the associated findings and uh, which ones are more common than others in terms of the ASD. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was a great talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've got a question um, just about uh, TTE and the sinus venosis. Is, mm. it, is it an effective screening uh, test then, a TTE? I mean, I, you can see the right heart dilation. Yeah. Um, but it's really hard to, it's really, really hard to visualize the, I'm just trying to think, cause so what they talk about, so Ruth, in this talk, Ruth, in the, the talk that Ruth Ram gave, like she talks very in detail about different views that you can get. For example, like a subcostal view, you know, the subcostal view when you rotate the probe to try and get the IVC, you can yeah. try and actually get a bike not by cable, but you can try and get the SVC with that as well. And maybe you might see it there. Um, you might see a superior or inferior type. Um, yeah. But uh, like, I mean, when I, even when I looked at the example images in the guidelines and textbooks, whatever, um, I found it really hard to follow actually. Like I found the, the flow patterns really difficult because you get, the, it, sometimes it even looks like the SVC straddles the interatrial septum um from the top um and I, I think that's actually just really really hard to pick and the flow can be a little bit turbulent so it's i mean i, I just found it really difficult um it, it is classically missed so the ones that are picked up are all the other three yeah because the coronary sinus um you, you kind of get a clue because it's so big um and then the asd the secundum and primum ASDs should should fall into your normal views Whereas the sinus venosus doesn't. So the primum you can see best on a subcostal floor chamber and the secundum on an apical floor chamber. So, so you'd have a volume overloaded uh, right side of the heart and then you'd do a TOE looking for the cause and find it. That's, that's what I would do, yeah. I, um, I remember listening to a talk, I think by Greg Scalia, you know, with the structural heart like conference that they did oh. and um they talked he talked about how he misdiagnosed a, a sinus venosis asd for pulmonary stenosis because they have such a big volume load 
um, that as it's trying to squeeze through the RVOT, it can be really turbulent. And so I think perhaps that, that's how it might be picked up. I don't know, I have no experience in it, but um, he, he was just saying, and that was one thing I remembered from the talk that if you see pulmonary stenosis, I guess just, to, or you think it's pulmonary stenosis, because that's really rare as well. Um, maybe just have a think about other differentials that can mimic that and sinus stenosis might be one of them. It's interesting you mentioned that because in Ruth Ram's talk, she said the exact same thing. They picked up a sinus stenosis that had missed, because they, they had heard a murmur, they interpreted it as pulmonary stenosis. And then she went a little bit further to say that doesn't make sense because it's not a pressure overloaded right heart that you're seeing, it's a volume overloaded heart. So if it's pulmonary stenosis, you would expect a pressure overload. I know that can be difficult to differentiate sometimes, but. Um, yeah, ex she's mentioned the exact same thing and added that point. Um, any other questions? So Benny, just to clarify, the difference between the PFO technically and an ASD is that in a PFO you have overlap of the, the septum, but you essentially have this functional sort of flap that can open up if your right-sided pressures are elevated above left-sided pressures. Is that is that sort of the, how you would describe the difference between them or? Exactly. That's a beautiful summary. Yeah. Okay. And that's why when you are looking for a PFO, it's important to do some, um, what are they called? Uh, uh, provocation tests. Yeah, provocation maneuvers like um, uh, get them to cough or, or press on the liver or um, something like that so that you're raising the right atrial pressure and you can see the, um, the, the jet of bubbles into the left atrium from the right atrium, yeah. Cool, thank you. Thank you, that was awesome. Yeah, it was great, Benny, again. Hey, thanks very much indeed. Thank you, thanks guys, thanks for joining. If you learnt something, hit like and subscribe to our channel for more videos uploaded weekly. For bite-sized versions, follow us on Twitter at Echo Nepean and check out the tutorials. Or head over to our websites for the latest hands-on courses. Links in the channel banner. And thanks, thanks for watching. watching.